On debate, Senator Delfon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for calling me to order. I would like to explain the grounds of the motion in my name so that no extra uh, wages be given to chairs and vice chairs to committees, uh, Senate committees, of Senate committees uh, for the rest of the session. COVID-19 and the terrible economic crisis that it's creating which has uh, imperiled the financial stability of millions of uh, Canadians and created massive uh, deficits in public finances, it makes it more necessary than ever for us to look at some of our own practices, including paying additional amounts of money to chairs and vice chairs of both standing Senate committees and special committees. For example, uh, the 11th March 2020 motion allows, in, in, right in the middle of a pandemic and a recession, to increase to, uh, an, uh, to offer to an extra six senators uh, to an extra $12,000 as a chair or vice chair of a, of a committee, which is added to our current base salary of $157,600 following the last increase we had in 2020. Several senators, including myself, decided that we, should, we would donate that, those, uh, that money to um, organizations that help Canadians in difficulty. That last measure brings it to a higher, an even higher number, the number of senators benefiting from this extra income. I think it's time for us to reverse that trend. In 1873, the Act on, in, uh, on Salaries and Monies Paid to MPs and, sen and Senators only expected extra salaries for uh, extra money for the Speaker of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Commons, and MPs and Senators' uh, salaries, as well as for the two Speakers, are now integrated in the Parliament Act. Extra income for the uh, leader of the opposition in the House of Commons was added in 1906. In 1920, we added the, uh, uh, the deputy speaker of the House of Commons uh, 50 years later. In 1975, an amendment added the uh, positions of vice speaker, uh, as, uh, deputy speaker and uh, assistant deputy speaker of the House of Commons. On, on the Senate side, the first only additional it took place in 1957 to give extra uh, higher salaries to the leader of the opposition in the Senate and the government leader in the Senate. In 1998, a new amendment authorized extra income for the pro tempore speaker. One, that the positions of chair and deputy chair of the Senate of the then 15 standing committees entitled the holders to additional salary adding then about 30 paid positions. Simply put, between 1867 and 2001, for over a century, these positions did not entitle their holders to any additional salary and, of course, improved pension benefits. Moreover, this was done not that the, in 2001 the situation will change, as I said, for 30 positions. This was done not at the request of the Senate, but only to mirror the proposed additional pay to equivalent positions in the House of Commons. In the other place, that change was moved by the then government in order to add at least 18 new paid positions to be shared amongst the members of his caucus, in addition to ministers and parliamentary secretaries for a total of 74 MPs of the governing party receiving an additional pay. Since it is also meant, it's, it's also meant that 36 new paid positions will go to opposition parties, as they are two vice chairs for all committees in the House of Commons. There was not much opposition to such an amendment, except from one party, the Canadian Alliance Party. In 2003, another amendment extended the entitlement to chairs and deputy chairs of special committees. When this amendment was being considered by the Standing Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs, former Senator Serge Royal questioned the need and indeed the wisdom to pay additional salaries to the chairs and vice chairs of any committee. On June 17, 2003, he stated, I quote, in practice, 
This position of chair or deputy chair does not entail many more responsibilities or work than other members or senators who do the preparatory work in relation to bills, attend all committee meetings, prepare questions, and occasionally amendments. Why provide additional benefits to someone who is often chosen in a particular way? Question mark. As much as possible, we must strive to maintain a certain balance of this system and avoid introducing elements that seeks to differentiate the work of members and senators. We are adding a great many names to the list of individuals in Parliament eligible to receive additional remuneration. Who is not getting a little extra under the current system? Question mark. The only ones left are the food soldiers, those without titles, the grumblers and the dragons. The entire system is designed to provide rewards, which seems to affect how parliamentarians behave." End of quote. In fact, the addition in 2001 and 2003 of, of over 30 paid positions in the Senate resulted in an unnecess unnecessary breach of the principle of equality amongst all senators and strengthened the positions of the leadership of the then two existing caucuses then in the positions to designate those entitled to these positions. With the emergence of new groups, the distribution of chair and deputy chairs has become the object of intense negotiations where each group fights to have a maximum of paid positions to share amongst its members. Moreover, this has led to the artificial creation of, art of additional paid positions to please more people. For example, in the last parliament, further to an agreement between all groups in the Senate, 10 additional paid deputy chair's positions were created to sit as second deputy chair. Senator Day was designated by the leaders to explain the deal in the chamber on November 7th, 2017. Following his speech, he was asked by Senator Tardif why only 10 committees will have two paid deputy chairs, while seven other committees will have under steering a third non-paid member. Specifically, Senator Tardif asked, quote, do you view this as a fair and equitable way of proceedings? Question mark, end of quote. Senator Day, Day replied, quote, no. But, like so many agreements, this is a compromise. This has gone through a lot of itinerations. I personally started negotiating with the point of view that I thought every committee should have two equal co-deputy co chairs like the House of Commons. There were those around the table who didn't want it anyway. This is the compromise that we reached. To say that it is based on, on understandable logic will be misleading you." End of quote. In other words, it's not the outcome of logic or of any principle, but rather the outcome of a deal. Senators, the same is true of the March 11, 2020 motion. The motion created six additional paid positions to enforce a deal, the whole notwithstanding the rules of the Senate. Among these six positions, there are the chair and deputy chair of the selection committee. Le cas du comité de sélection est particulier. So the selection committee case is of particular interest. Let me remind you that only seven years ago, the Senate rules were amended to designate the committee as being neither standing nor special. This change, put forward by Senator Carignan, came into effect after a political controversy regarding extra um, salaries of $11,200 given to the chair who had held very few meetings. Despite that fact, on the 11th of March, additional salaries were brought back for that committee, and the chair received $12,500 and the vice president $6,200. Furthermore, the motion created extra positions of vice presidency vice chair then in seven committees, and then 11 new positions in 2017. 
but none of this is very satisfying. So this motion, if it weren't shortened, would bring us back in May when we, with new committees, we would have subcommittees with third members, but most committees would have third members who would not be compensated, even though they were carrying out the same functions as those who would be compensated. Paid position is not a good thing. It, for many, it appears as a kind of culture of entitlement, and it is damaging the reputation of the Senate, as we've seen in the media. As the government contemplates amendments to the Parliament of Canada Act to reflect the new reality in the Senate, including the end of the partisan duopoly and the emergence of new groups independent from political parties, there's a need for a policy that is not modeled after the House of Commons, but rather is specific to the new Senate. In my view, this policy should be a return to the long-established practice of no additional pay for chairs and deputy chairs. The Senate is made of talented and devoted individuals, and I trust there will be no, there will be many volunteers for these positions of committee chairs and deputy chairs, even in the, additional, in the absence of additional pay. Indeed, in the US, in the UK House of Lords, the model for the Senate, the chair of all the committees, select or special, do not receive any additional compensation. In the US Senate, chair or vice chair's positions do not entitle the holders to any additional remuneration. These positions are considered prestigious, and there's no shortage of candidates, despite the additional workload and stress that the roles involve. Speaking of the U.S. Senate, out of the 100 elected senators, only three are entitled to a small additional salary, the president pro tempore, the leader of the majority, and the leader of the minority. Some may say that the U.S. Senators are rich people, much richer than we are, but this is not the principle that answers the issue. In contrast, here in the Senate, we currently have 96 appointed Senators and over 50 officers entitling the holders to additional salaries, including further to the, including further to the adoption of the March 11 motion, 45 chairs and deputy chairs. On the audit committee set up, and the special committee on COVID is put in place, there will be at least four more paid positions for a total of 49. Incidentally, there are now 21 senators in the Conservative Caucus, which as a whole is entitled to about the same number of paid positions under the current act, as implemented by our rules and our motions notwithstand applied notwithstanding the rules. With respect, this makes no sense. Going forward, I invite the current government to eliminate extra pay for Senate chairs and deputy chairs when amending the Parliament of Canada Act. The government should limit additional pay to one, two, or three persons in the leadership of each recognized group in the Senate, including the GRO. In conclusion, such changes will bring us in line with the U.S. Senate and will also permanently end the temptation to twist the existing rules to artificially create a standing committee or additional paid positions to be shared between groups, a temptation that seems to be irresistible considering the November 17, 2017 motion and the March 11, 2020 motion. Until the Parliament of Canada is amended, I invite us not to remain idle, especially in the light of the current economic crisis. Through a through a sessional order, the adoption of my motions will end the additional pay to all chairs and deputy chairs and will demonstrate to Canadians that we are ready to do our work for them, including as chair or vice chair, without any additional remuneration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. <laughs> On debate, a question, a question. So, Senator Dalfon, your time is out, but we, Senator Michel Deville, would like to put a question. Will you take the question? Five minutes. Yes. Senator Melville Deschain. Senator Melville Deschain. Senator Dalfon, I thank you for the historical background that I was not aware of. I must say. 
that I myself have considerable concerns about providing compensation on these committees, but I would like to hear you on two matters. First, I have never chaired a committee, but according to some, there is extra work carried out by the chairs which merits a certain compensation, so I would like to hear you on that. Second, can we truly say there's such a difference between compensation at the House of Commons, where clearly chairs are compensated, and the Senate? Given the current times, the COVID crisis, the difficulties Canadians are facing, though, I think this is the best time to be asking ourselves these questions. Senator Delfon, I thank the Honourable Senator Emilie Deschain for this friendly question, because it is a very important question that she has brought to bear on this discussion. Upon studying the question in greater depth, we could find some 50 positions of chair and deputy chair of the Senate. That's half the Sen Senate, not the same in the other place. The number of chairs and uh, deputy chairs amounts to about 75 people of 370 some. Not the same rate. As for the work carried out by a chair or deputy chair, I was deputy chair in a prior committee in a prior session, and I know that uh, it certainly took a lot of work. And I know that the chair as well was very active. But I know that m being a member of the Justice Committee, I suggested a number of amendments and helped study a number of bills. That was weeks and weeks of work and editing and writing that I shared with Senator McIntyre, with whom I had an excellent working relationship, but with whom I worked on so many amendments to the Criminal Code. I was a sponsor of the divorce bill. It took me an enormous amount of work. I spent days in and days out discussing the issue with specialists in justice. It was a very thick bill, and all that I did outside of Senate session time. I never required payment. I think that everyone here wants to work sincerely and in good faith to make a maximum contribution to their work here at the Senate. Why would we need to give them a small pay to br draw them into positions of chair or deputy chair? I think that makes no sense. I think that these positions should go to those best qualified to carry out the work and to play these roles. Most are willing to do this in many jurisdictions without being paid. In the United States, they spend days reviewing justice appointments, budget reviews, security issues, matters of money that are much more voluminous than ours, and they're not paid. 